want to acknowledge that panel. That was awesome. Um, what came to mind is a word that I learned um, that, that Teresa said is Ubuntu, right? Which means I am because we are, which means that we are all directly connected. Um, and we ought to remember that. And also, um, a Zulu greeting said that it's called Sawubono, which means I see you, right? I see you. And if I see you, that means I have a responsibility to you. So I see you, sis. Yes. Okay, moving right along, we're going to have remarks from Dr. Kofi um, Osei Kusi from Ghana, right? Yes. Dr. Kofi, please come up. <laughs> Put your hands together for Dr. Kofi. Yes. Yes, yes. Did you know that you're all so amazing? <laughs> the co-founder, the co-director of the Columbia University Center for Justice, Cheryl, or I would call Shiro. Yeah. Sisters on the outside. Sisters who are still incarcerated right now friends from around the world here today, all partners that have supported this great movement up to this point. I bring you warm solidarity greetings from Africa. And you should clap, you should clap for that. Because Africa is a matter of all humanity. That is where all humanity started from. I bring in greetings from Ghana and from the Pan-African Leadership Institute where I serve as president. I thank you for your warm reception into this very beautiful sisterhood community. I should say I feel so much at home and I say to all of you, Aiko, can you say that as well? Say Aiko. And when I say Aiko, you respond, yae. Aiko means well done to you. Aiko. When I say Aiko, you say yae. Aiko. Aiko. Well done to you. Sisters, in every generation, there are giant problems. But out of these giant problems arise great people. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reminded us that we may not all become famous, but we can all become great. Yeah. And our greatness is in our service. Gathered in this room tonight may not be the world's most famous people, but definitely in this room tonight are some of the greatest people in the whole world. Why? Because you all have stood up to serve and help bring greater justice to humanity. You have all thought beyond yourselves. You have lived to free others from physical, psychological, and systemic incarceration. Our world, my sisters and brothers, our world continues to face many challenges, the greatest of which are injustices, particularly against women and children. And these problems are not just in Africa, but they are global. We heard from the panel tonight. There are many injustices in the world, unfair international trade laws, that keep many nations in poverty. Across Africa today, I can remind you that there is a significant uproar 
against neocolonialism. And today, only this week, Africa inaugurated its first youngest elected leader at the age of 44 in Senegal. And these young leaders are rising to power against what we call neocolonialism. There are many outdated laws around the world, not just Africa from being returned to Africa. Stolen properties, we have items from our chiefs and our kings, and yet there are laws in the United Kingdom today that says these items can only be loaned back to its owners and not returned. Say injustice. Sadly, my sisters and brothers, they are injustices even against the physically challenged. And this is a group that I have a foundation that supports. Today, in an era of plenty in the world, hunger continues to cast its shadow on so many lives. World Vision International tells us that there are more than 700 million people who go to bed hungry every single night. My sisters, this generation is blessed with many new servant leaders. And we have them here tonight. Cheryl, Rita, who we visited earlier today, Yolanda, Teresa, and many of you here, or perhaps everyone here, that has stood up to sacrifice and lead the charge. You are all the hope of the world today. The world needs you. The world needs you, and the world needs you. My dear sisters, you know, one day, I don't know what came on me, about, 12, about 11, 12 years ago, I drove from my home to our central female prisons in Ghana, about an hour and a half's drive. And I, I had no idea about the prison system, but I asked to see the head of the female prisons. I had no idea. I just had a feeling. So I went there, and the lady welcomed me into her office, very friendly officer. And I said, can I learn about the challenges that inmates in this prison face? And she said to me, one third of the inmates in this prison have no family that visits them. And I said, why? And she said, many of them are foreigners in jail, so they have no members of family within here, this country, to visit them. Many of them have no family, or they have been rejected by their family, or because of the stigma, they don't get no visitors. And I said, what do they need? They needed sanitary towels, the food was bad, they had no legal aid, and so on and so forth. And I said, can you select five women for me, for me to start supporting? To cut the long story short, they went through the records and selected five women. One was from Kenya, two were from Nigeria, one was from Togo, and one from Ghana. When they brought them into the office, the lady introduced me to them and said, this gentleman is here and wants to be of support to you. And when she said that, one of the inmates started jumping up and down, up and down in the room, with tears running down her face. And she pointed at me and said, every single night, I go on my knees and pray for an angel to come help me. And you are that angel that has showed up tonight, that morning. And that challenged me to get my foundation to supporting people in prisons. As I conclude my remarks tonight, I'd like to suggest that what the world is missing and what the world needs is that single African philosophy that we're talking about tonight. That philosophy of Ubuntu. The philosophy that says, I am because you are. I am because you are. I am because you are. Today, our visit to the transitional centers and listening to all the transformational stories reminded me that we must not give up the fight for justice, the fight for mercy, the fight for clemency, the fight for alternative approaches to reformation, the fight for justice beyond punishment. We need more conscientious leaders 
We need more Ubuntu leaders. We need more leaders with a heart. We need more leaders with a conscience. We need more leaders that know that they are because we are. Leadership is not about position. Leadership is the capacity to influence. And every single person in this room has the capacity to influence others. Everyone here is a leader. You can influence others for change. As I conclude, I'm just reminded of one of the books that I authored. And it's entitled, You Are Too Much. You are too much. I like to say the Nigerian way. The like Nigerians have the way they say, you're too much. You're just too much. And in that book, I have a chapter entitled, You're Too Precious. Say, I'm too precious. I'm too precious. You're too intelligent. I'm too intelligent. You're too gifted. I'm too gifted. You're too great. I'm too great. You're too good looking. I'm too good. And you're too powerful. And I am just reminded as I finish the words of Marianne Williamson. And she put it in her most famous quote. That our deepest fear, because we are too powerful, is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are too powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant? Who am I to be gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? But actually, who are you not to be? You're too powerful. God bless you. Thank you.